Today on Hands-On Photography, I have some feedback to go through and I have a bit of a, a, a bone to pick with the folks at Glass.Photo. Uh, quite frankly, I think I'm done with it, but stay tuned. I'm going to tell you why. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands on Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. As you already know, because you're not a first time subscriber, uh, this is a show where I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. But uh, if this is your first time joining, Welcome to you. Thank you for hopping in. Now go ahead and subscribe in whatever podcast application you enjoy this on. And if you have a opp opportunity to do a nice little review and rating, I'd appreciate you giving me a rating uh, so we can help be discovered even more in the photography community and just help grow this beautiful hands on photography podcast community as well. Thank you for all of that support. So again, welcome to you. And I hope you uh, can stick around and tell some more folks about the show. All right. But with all of that out of the way, I want to go ahead and get started with this week's show. A couple of things I want to handle. Um, so let's start with part one. Part one is, you know, uh, back in I think it was like August 13th or something like that. I did a tech break on our Twit TV tech break feed where I spoke about glass.photo. And if you haven't subscribed to Tech Break, go ahead and do that right now. Twit.tv slash Tech Break, uh, one word, and that'll take you right to it. But yeah, I, I spoke about Glass.Photo and Glass.Photo is a service that is supposed to be the, uh, I'm not sure if you want to call it a competitor to Instagram or if you want to call it the alternative to Instagram, because what it is, is a photo sharing app where photographers or photo enthusiasts can install it and upload their photos and not have to worry about all of the, you know, ins and outs and and, and bad stuff that goes with algorithmic apps. Uh, you don't have to worry about ads. You don't have to worry about um, trying to get pushed up higher on the on the on the platform because you don't have enough engagement and all of that. All of that stuff that tends to, you know, stress some people out regarding um, their photography and, and, you know, trying to show off their work. This is again, it's subscription based. It's five dollars a month. I think you get two weeks free to start out like a free trial, but it is $5 a month or you can pay an annual fee and it is beautiful. It is a absolutely beautiful app. The images come through. They're not getting ridiculously compressed the way Instagram compresses my images, <laughs> even though I try to scale them back some, uh, they, they look just absolutely amazing. And you don't get all of this, the gazillion notifications and things like that. It's, it's really a good way to have distraction free uh, photo enjoyment on your iOS device, whether it's an iPad or an iPhone. And for the most part, folks, I enjoyed it. But well, what I did enjoy for the most part was just the, the quality of images that I saw on there. But after that, it just sort of felt dead and quiet. And that's maybe because it's just too new. Um, there were some quirks on it that I didn't care for. And that's the, the, the fact that I can't necessarily show some sort of acknowledgement to the photographers that I am that I'm checking out on the page. If I'm scrolling through and tap on an image and look at it and it looks good, I can't let the, the photographer know that, hey, I saw this because I think what, what they're trying to do is lead you into leave, leaving comments for the photographer. So if there's going to be any type of engagement, it's going to be a comment section. That's it. There's no likes or there's no hearts or anything like that. And sometimes, folks, me personally, I didn't necessarily want to type out a comment, you know, um, because I think what's going to happen is it could lead to just comments of emojis, you know, because people are going to, they're not going to feel like typing out something. And I don't think that's really added anything to the engagement and, or, or the community side of things, but I don't know. That's just me. At any rate, I'm done with it. I'm, 
I've had it for two weeks. They've I might as well keep it for another two weeks because I just paid the DAC um, five dollar subscription fee. But I'm 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 done with it. I've been using Mr. Laporte's old iPhone, and again, it 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 works fine on that. Works fine on my iPad, but it's just not not doing anything doing anything for me. I much rather you know step into the world of Flickr if it comes to having community based. Uh, conversations and photo sharing versus what this is offering. And I wonder just, uh, I wonder about the longevity of glass, you know, it, because it's brand new right now, because it's subscription based, um, you, you know, what, are, what is it, what's going to happen with it from, from a growth standpoint, how long is it going to be around? Will people be interested in this app? Uh, the beauty of Instagram, and I say the word beauty loosely is Instagram has any and everybody using it and your signal as a photographer can be boosted in Instagram by someone that really isn't a photographer. Okay. Uh, or, or just someone that just happens to like art, you know? Um, I don't know. I, I just, I'm curious how this is going to shake out. There's always people trying to compete with the likes of Instagram or any other social media platform and they tend to fall flat. But I don't know. What do you th what do you think? Let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts on this. But I'm done with glass dot photo. It's been a fun experience. And um, yeah, I guess it's time for me to give that iPhone back because, uh, yeah, it's just it's just not for me. All right. But I do want to do another segment here. Um, I, there, I got some email from all of you quite, <laughs> quite regularly. And I appreciate that. Uh, we get got an email address of hop at twit.tv. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, image critique requests, all that, just send them there. And I answer them as soon as I can. But um, about two weeks ago on episode 91, I believe I did a show talking about the Photoshop alternatives. And boy, that was a pretty passionate <laughs> episode. Uh, that show came out and I got a gazillion messages um, about that show. And, and it, it's a wide range of information where there's people that enjoyed it, people that thought I should look at this, thought I should mention that, so on and so forth. And I dig that. So what I want to do is pause just for a second and take a look at some feedback that you, the hands-on photographer listener, sent in. OK, this email comes from Mr. Jim White and it starts as such. Nope, there's no text on the screen. This is a little bit different. This is an audio file. Let's check it out. Hi, Mr. Pruitt. I saw your recent podcast about Photoshop alternatives and I wondered if you had ever used Acorn by Flying Meat. I used to be a Photoshop enthusiast many years ago before they went to the subscription model. Then I found Acorn and I've been completely happy with it ever since. Sure, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of Photoshop, but it has provided me with the tools to do everything I require as a photographer who manages most images in Capture One, but who occasionally needs more extensive image editing features. Acorn is available at the Apple App Store, but I prefer to download my copy directly from the Flying Meat website, because updates arrive quicker that way. Acorn only runs on the Mac, so if you use the Windows platform, you're going to be out of luck. The price is nearly dirt cheap in my opinion, but the license allows you to use it on all the Mac computers you own. I tell everyone I know to try it on for size. It's free for 30 days, and there's no subscriptions. My experience has been that for most photographers, students, amateurs, and even some professionals, Acorn is all you're going to need. It opens Photoshop files just like most image processing software, and unless your demands require the most sophisticated Photoshopery, Acorn could be all you need to get the job done. Thanks again, Ant, for everything you do on Twit. Diversity in tech is always a good thing. Wow. So, um, Mr. White, thank you for that very, very kind message there, and thank you for all of this information about this acorn app and 
I never heard of the website Flying Meat. Such a cool, <laughs> interesting URL name. Yeah, that that's that's an interesting app. And as you mentioned, as you mentioned, it is only for the Mac operating system. So that's a bit of a drawback. Um, so if you're out if you're out on Windows and Linux and stuff like that, you're out of luck. But I do like the fact that this thing does seem to have a lot of um, power built right into it. That's that's perfect for someone that's trying to get their feet wet in a little bit more photo manipulation versus photo uh, post processing. So, yeah, that's that's an interesting item there. Thank you so much for sharing that. I've never heard of it. But again, I would personally recommend something more along the lines that is cross-platform, such as the Affinity photo that we talked about previously on the show. But again, thank you so much for sending that, sir. That's pretty daggum awesome. And I got a lot more suggestions from folks, and I probably will bring those up in a later feedback episode. All right. Okay. So folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode. Um, yeah, another, another fun week. I've, I've really been enjoying getting all of the messages from you folks in email, as well as, uh, messages on the wonderful world of social media. Again, feel free to give me a follow on Twitter. I am ant underscore Pruitt and feel free to give me a follow on Instagram. I am ant underscore Pruitt over there as well. And again, don't forget to give us a nice uh, rating and, and comment and share the show out to help continue to grow hands-on photography. All of that support means a lot. And um, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing, folks. I really do appreciate all the good vibes and good energy that you bring to me, your host of this awesome, fun podcast. All right. Until next time, you all continue to create and dominate. And also, folks, be well and do well. Y'all take care. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. I'm just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Thanks.